I looked you straight in the eyes and I said, my wife is the Oprah of her generation. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind? Did you think I was a lunatic? No, I, I think if I thought you were a lunatic, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. Why wouldn't you be the Oprah of your generation? A lot of people know that Gary and I, we've been building this business for a while, but not a lot of people know that we have Rachel, who is the CEO of Valeria Inc. That's been with us for three years now, four, four years. years. Four. Four Holy years. moly. As of last week. Four yep. years. And I feel like every time I tell people, our peers in the industry or anyone that we have a CEO, everyone is like, what? Because it's not a very common thing to have in a personal brand kind of company. So I wanted to bring us all together so we can chat about our journey at Valeria Inc., what everyone is doing. Um, and I want to start with introducing Rachel first. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rachel, I'm going to mess up your last name because I always <laughs> do Austro, but mm -hmm. for me, it's, you know, it's like this, yeah. this is your Rachel Wexler, yeah. CEO of Valeria Inc., yeah. period. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Gary, let's go back a little bit and let's talk about how we found Rachel and why we felt that we needed Rachel four years ago. So that was back in 2000, math, math, math. It was late 2019. And I vividly remember before we went on a hunt to find Rachel, mm -hmm. we were on a trip with the kids. Um, it was like three years it into- was in the, It was in the Hamptons. It was in the Hamptons. I was in a swimming pool when I made the statement. I, remember. I was very pregnant with Maxi, and I remember vividly the conversation that we've had. You weren't pregnant with Maxi. Max was born on October 12, 2018. 18? 18, yeah. I Ra was Rachel. not pregnant with Maxi. <laughs> wow. Maxi was already around. The reason I know that you weren't pregnant with Maxi is because that uh, the YouTube video that I, I proudly want to say has over 140 million views on YouTube, your pregnancy transformation... That to me is when Maxi, like he was born. You're absolutely right. Video. So that video was prior to uh, us joining forces with Rachel. We're almost three years into it. And I remember we were in the pool and we're talking about, okay, what's next? How do we blow up this opportunity that we have and being able to uh, create the content that we wanted to create and kind of build an infrastructure. Yeah. And I remember you looked at me and you're like, we need a CEO. Because back then it was, I was doing some things. You were mainly running like the people that we had. You were operating most of the company. Mm -hmm. But I just remember we were so overwhelmed and trying to figure out how we have enough time for strategy and innovation and creation of content. Mm -hmm. And I just remember he looked at me, he's like, we need a really strong leader. We need a CEO. And I was looking at him and said, CEO for what? For my cooking yeah. videos? Well, I specifically remember saying we need a C-level executive. I, at that point, I didn't know yet what, you know, whether it was going to be a COO or a CEO. And, yeah. yeah, you just said, we just felt that we needed a strong leader because we both know... Um, our strong suits, but also our weaknesses. And mm -hmm. a lot of the operations is our weaknesses. <laughs> so yeah, I was going to say, I actually feel like I remember this conversation more <laughs> than you two and I wasn't even there. But I think the <laughs> two of you, um, you always talk about your strengths and weaknesses a lot. I think mm -hmm. as a company, it's something that we really talk about a lot. And the three of us like leading that way. We like leading with our strengths. We know our weaknesses are always going to be our weaknesses, but our strengths always our strengths. And so when I met you, um, I remember you saying, I had this conversation with Valeria. Valeria is so creative and she wants to spend as much time as she can being creative. And I'm not strong operationally. And there's a lot of systems. And as we get bigger and we become an agency and we hire more employees and we grow, there's a lot of systems and operations, operational elements that need mm -hmm. to be included. And you mm -hmm. said, that's not my strong suit. You know, I'm so strong in other areas and visionary and leading and trying new things and tactics and um, looking at data, but the actual day-to-day -day operations I want to be removed from. And Valeria wants to be removed from, you know, the business and the day-to-day -day so that she can just be creative. So that's mm -hmm. what I remember the conversation being without that being there. That was the conversation, <laughs> beautiful summary. Um, that was the conversation. And then Gary uh, decided to go and find the best headhunter in Toronto to find. Well, I didn't go and find him. I, I knew him. He was somebody that I'd used in my previous businesses. Yes. And then we found Rachel. And Rachel, your background is... 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know your background. This is me asking you a question. Yes, for the podcast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I worked um, as an executive um, for a few years in digital tr- digital transformation. So I worked with large enterprises building, di- building digital product. Um, lots of tricky words there, but building digital product for large enterprises. Um, and what was so interesting was I was working with a lot of executives um, who were building and spending a lot of money transforming their entire teams, you know, hundreds of people, thousands of people in their teams building these products. And I started asking the marketing teams, or I started asking the executives, how are you then going to get this into people's hands? So mm-hmm. you're spending a ton of money building these products. How how are consumers going to know about these products? And they would all look at each other and you realized it wasn't something that they even talked about. So that's my background in building that product. And then that's how I came here. Yeah. And I just, I wanted to comment on the qualification process. So uh, Stephen Pezum, who's the gentleman who's the uh, the founder and operator of Bedford, which is the, uh, the uh, I don't want to say staffing agency, he's like a, an executive recruiter. Um, I had worked with him to fill out a C-suite of executives in a previous company that I had. And he had a really thorough like qualification process. Like he used these, uh, did you see the cards? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he uses these cards and we sit down for an extended period of time. And you know, he, so I had already worked with him on that and I had experience with him on that. So were you, you and I were together in that meeting. I think we were, we went to Stephen's office. I was office in one. And he yeah. put the cards on the table, yes, right? I was in one of the meetings. Yeah. And so we, you know, we, we explained all the different things that as Stephen really goes into the psychology of it and mm-hmm. he tries to make sure that he matches people, not only um, from a, like a qualifications perspective, but from a personality perspective. And Stephen left that, you know, after that qualification process, he left, uh, he left that meeting. And I think it was in a few days later, he called me and he said, I have the person, like I have the person who is going to be like, who's going to fill this role. I said, you have a candidate for me to interview. He goes, no, no, no. I have the person (laughs) who is going to fill this role. And Stephen, like, he's really good at this. Stephen's a very senior guy in this industry. So when he said that to me, I was like, okay, let's see. You know. I remember being very worried. I mean, at this point, you already know me. You know how I'm skeptical about a lot of people's um, abilities and um, understanding of like what it is that we needed, especially in this industry, because it's so new. And in 2017, 18, 19, honestly, still, there's so much unknown. There's no playbook to follow. So a lot of the roles that we hired for in the beginning before Rachel we were learning how to navigate that while training the staff also to learn how to navigate their roles Mm -hmm. because it didn't exist. So when we were starting to look for that leader in a personal brand media company, I'm like, (laughs) we're not going to find anybody. Yeah. (laughs) So the fact that you came with your background and you also had, I mean, you took a risk here because I, we couldn't really show you a lot of data on the industry. I think what's so nice about our dynamic, and a lot of people don't know that, is I think the three of us really lead with intuition a lot of the time. And I think that that's what's hard about your point and and finding somebody for this role. And in this industry, honestly, fine, there's the data. And I think there's two sides of it. There's data and there's intuition. Mm -hmm. And I think the three of us just had this intuition when we met like there's something here. And I think that that's, there's no like math, you know, or, or real logic in that. But I think when we met, um, I know when I had my first conversation with you, when I even had my first conversation with Steven, it just felt right. And I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I, you know, that's what happened. So anyways, it was a, it was a snowstorm in Toronto, um, where we were all living at the time. Um, and Gary and I had had met, I'd met with Steven, you know, a couple of different well, rounds. Met in person? I before? actually cannot remember. I know we met over the phone. No, we met, I think we did. I think I'm, we met at Steven's office. Yes. Um, and so we met at Steven's office. So yes, we did. We met at Steven's office. Then you said, I really want you to meet Valeria. Ultimately, you know, yes. now that I know that it's really true. If you don't, <laughs> Valeria doesn't like someone. <laughs> it's not going to work. You know what I did? I did the same thing with you yeah. that Valeria did with me mm. before she decided to Picking marry Picking a partner. Yeah. yeah. So she it's said to me. It's very similar. You know, you know what she said to me? Yeah. She said, she, like, this was maybe uh, 10 days after I met her. I told her that at one point she's going to be my wife. She looked at me and she said, come meet my mother. If my mother likes you, we can mm-hmm. continue dating. If it was not, very, it felt like a Russian matchmaker. So that's sure. what it was. <laughs> so I said, so in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to take Rachel to meet Valeria. And if Valeria likes her, we're going to continue. Yeah. And that's it. 
Yes. And so, you know, Valeria being Valeria and having this business, but also her three boys, um, you know, I know that you, when you decide something and I love that about you, you're like, this is my decision. And I, it, I have to start it yesterday. And until you start yes. it, you can't sleep or sit or talk about mm-hmm. anything else, which some people might not love. I actually love about you. Um, and so you said, I need you to meet Valeria. Can you meet her tomorrow? I'm like, sure. This was like a Friday, I think. I'm like, sure, I can meet you tomorrow. Okay, great. Max, you have swim lessons or somebody has swim. We're at the JCC, which is a community center. Um, but and like way north. It, way north in, in to Toronto. Live. And I'm like a Toronto snob. I don't go north of uh, Eglinton. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll come. I drove. It was, I woke up, opened my doors. It was like the biggest snowstorm. I think we still haven't had a snowstorm even that big. I trucked um, to the meeting. I'm like, oh my God, Valeria, Valeria is going to hate me. I'm wearing winter boots. She, I don't know how she does it. She's always in this, these amazing outfits, even in the middle of winter. She's going to think, I can't hire this person. She's wearing winter boots, but it was an actual snowstorm. So I pull up in my winter boots and we I, we went um, to the JCC and we got there and you're like, we're here for a meeting. Everyone's in swimsuits. It's like <laughs> it's like baby and toddler <laughs> swim class yeah. and yeah. you're looking for a room. So I yeah. remember they brought us to... Like a, like vacant, a fundraising vacant yeah, it was office, like a vacant office closet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's where we met. Yeah. I don't quite remember the conversation uh, because I feel like at that point, I also didn't truly understand what this business can mm-hmm. be and look like. Uh, but Gary knew. And I always, I always credit Gary for having the vision to see how far this can go and to recognize an industry that honestly, at that point, wasn't recognized. It wasn't even an industry, I wouldn't even call it. Yeah. Yeah. No one really knew what they were doing. There was money coming through. It was a media form, but I don't know that it it was was the wild west. I mean, we still call it the wild west right now, but back then it was, it was truly a A desert. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So when we, I just remember when we sat down, I just really appreciated, first of all, the fact that you did show up because it was a snowstorm. Um, and, uh, such a short notice because that's how Gary operates. Um, and in this very unassuming location, and I know you come from a very, you know, um, very, uh, prestigious background, like in your work, yes, you worked in <laughs> startups, but it's true, but she, no, no, like, absolutely. there's a structure, you know, mm-hmm. there's like a way of things being done. And I was like, okay, this is a bit of a freestyle here. Um, so when I kind of noticed all those things about you, I said, okay, this is a person that will you know, roll with whatever comes, understands our vision, Gary's vision then, and we can grow together from there. So thank God my gut feeling did not steer me wrong. Today's episode is sponsored by One Skin. They are here to help you simplify your skincare regimen. Founded by four PhD scientists dedicated to skin longevity, OneSkin proves you don't need a complicated routine to achieve better skin. Their topical supplements make it easy to help your skin stay younger and healthier without all the extra steps. The secret One Skin proprietary OS1 peptide. It's the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce the buildup of senescent cells. That means healthier, younger looking skin with fewer lines and wrinkles, reduced age spots and a stronger natural barrier. Your skin does so much for you. Return the favor with One Skin. It's light, not greasy, soaks in very quickly and leaves skin feeling soft and supple. One Skin is more than skincare. It targets the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. For a limited time, my listeners will get an exclusive 15% off their first One Skin purchase using the code Valeria when you check out at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code Valeria. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the show and tell them we sent you. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with One Skin. Rachel, did I give you did I give you that whole spiel that I do where I said my wife? I looked you straight in the eyes and I said my wife is the Oprah of her generation. Did you did. I, did I do yes, that? Yes, you did. Like I have to ask you, like you know, I mean, I've done that from time to time. Um, but when I did that with you that day mm-hmm. in that like broom closet, <laughs> the JCC. <laughs> it was the, literally a broom closet. We I think it was, in, they were falling on us. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that they, because I knew somebody there, I knew somebody on the committee of mm-hmm. some, something or other. Um, and I said, I have to have a meeting and, and they said, oh yeah, here. And then anyways, that's where we ended up. But when I, when I did that, well, you know, what, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind? Did you think I was a lunatic? 
No, I, I think if I thought you were a lunatic, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. So um, I, I like visionaries, you know, working for startups, entrepreneurs, which is, you know, going into my background, that's been my background forever. Um, since I started, no matter what the startup or entrepreneur journey was, I wanted to be a part of it. So I like building from the ground up and I like lofty goals. So mm -hmm. you mix those two things together and I look at the economy. I look at what I think is the future of the economy based on what the information was then and what I, you know, thought in my gut talking to you about what you think the future of that economy is going to look like. And then you have these really bullish goals, which I know we both agree. You know, we always give goals to our team that we know are too high, but we give them anyway, because that's just how we are. So when I heard that, I'm like, why wouldn't you be the Oprah of your generation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's been quite a journey for four years now. I feel like you brought a lot of structure, a lot of um, clarity into our work life. And honestly, our personal life as well, because yeah, it's, all, it's all intertwined yeah, together. Personal is business and business is personal. It's yeah. very exactly. mixed in this world. So it's been really amazing to see how the three of us, you know, grew together as a team and um, as friends as well. When you started with us, you didn't have a family yet. No, I was but, newly engaged. Yeah, but I think before, before we get into that, um, I want to just, if you don't mind, I want to touch on, on something. So... Rachel, we started, we, you started with us late 2019 and I think- It was it, January 2020. So we January, met and then it was, mm -hmm. you know, Christmas, right, holidays right. and, you know, let's so start think, when we get back. I think anybody knows what happened yeah. shortly after January 2020. So can you talk about that experience in terms of what happened and, and how you pivoted the company? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, you've heard this story from a lot of different people. You know, I, we come, we our structure was so different. And looking back, I'll kind of fast forward before I go back, it was the best thing that I think ever happened to us, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there was lots of positives that came out of, of a pandemic and we learned a lot. Um, obviously, you know, lots of negative that happened. But um, for us, it was a really positive thing. I think it taught us that, you know, something can change at the drop of a hat, especially in this industry. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to pivot towards that change. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think it was the best thing that ever happened because we learned to adapt so quickly. And I, I think so well. I mean, we're sitting here still, so I believe it so well. So um, I started in January 2020, went into the office. We were living, we were working at an office in downtown Toronto, which we still have actually mm -hmm. today. And, you know, everybody was coming into office. It was so much so that Gary was so old fashioned that, you know, our editor would say, you know, I'm editing a video hotspotting from my phone on my two hour commute. Could I possibly work from home some days? And Gary was like, absolutely not. Rachel, tell them absolutely not. <laughs> um, and so that's what I walked into. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, how it was for the first two months, which. But, sorry, before you, I apologize, before <laughs> yeah. you tell, you, you you really had to re-educate me because you and I come from different generations. and Similar so, business backgrounds, which yeah, is odd, but yeah. very different times. Right. So you had to re-educate me to be, to kind of take it easy and say, no, no, it's okay. People can mm -hmm. work together. But to that point, you're getting, you're corralling everybody back into the office. Yeah. Now. So that's so, what's, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was January then, you know, March hits. It was my, my birthday was like the first day of COVID. So my birthday is March 13th. And so like first day of COVID, pretty much I get on, on a plane the day before to come to Florida on a vacation with my then fiance. Um, and, you know, obviously COVID spiraled very quickly out of there. And so I remember you calling me saying, you know, how are we going to do this? And I think that that's what works so well with us. I'm like, we'll do it. We'll figure it out. Yep. And so I think that that was just part of it. That's our personalities of we will figure it out. Everyone went on online. Everyone went remote. I got very lucky that in those first two months, I really, you know, removed some people from the team. I didn't feel like we're the best for that vision that we had. And I replaced and added mm -hmm. roles I did. And I got very lucky because I, you know, I, we have one hire or producer that comes with me to every company that I go to. And so I called her, you know, two weeks in into the job and said, you're going to come work for me now at this other company. And she's still with us yeah. almost, you know, again, four years later. Yeah. Um, and so I had that core team of people that, you know, I had her and I had, you know, and then we hired somebody that had worked with her. So we had this core team that knew each other, even though, you know, each individual member didn't, we had these connections outside of the business and so I think that fueled it mixed with just, we learned how to adapt. Like we just did. We learned how to create content at home. We learned, you know, you learned how to be more independent in that. And like I said, I think it was actually the best part because before then we were going to a studio every single day. And, mm -hmm. you know, Gary, you and I wanted that. We called it the Ellen DeGeneres model where Valeria would like wake up, you know, you picture like a cartoon character lying in bed, <laughs> sitting up, they go get their hair and makeup done. They just sit in a chair, you know, their, their notes are, you know, 
here, Miss mm-hmm. Valeria Lepovetsky, here's your, you know, your lines for the day. And that's what, you know, you and I coming from a business background, we're like, that's going to be yep. the, the format. That's going to be how we run this business. And that was wrong. If we would have done that, that would have been the wrong attempt for Valeria. That was the wrong thing <clears throat> for Valeria. You the know, wrong approach. Just referencing Ellen DeGeneres. So my understanding of her operation, and I mean, it's hearsay, right? I mean, I haven't been on her set, but my understanding is she has something like 200 people on her team, but only two people, and get this, are allowed to talk to her. And the reason only two people are allowed to talk to her is because if, imagine she has to go in every day knowing she's going to be interviewing all these different people and performing and doing all the things that she does, and she has to say, hello, how are you, to 100 people, it's it's very distracting for her. So that was why they put that together. And I didn't, I didn't my vision wasn't to have that where nobody's allowed to talk to Valeria, mm-hmm. but my vision was more of this like automated kind of, um, you know, people in orbit of Valeria where, okay, the next... The, the like a, a, the next piece of content has already been thought out and planned out. Here you go, Valeria. Make this piece of content. Yeah. Whether it's yeah, organic you were looking or at it like a business plan was, every single yeah. day, which I think that balance is so great because we have made a business, mm-hmm. you know, out of it because of that approach. But yeah. it just didn't work for you. People are no. always shocked at the at the <clears throat> volume of content to this day that we produce. No, you produce. A- absolutely. And I think that's I think that's where the magic happened when there was I mean the creative, which is me, and I am obviously a very active part of the company. So we have me, we have you, Gary, that has this, you know, lofty idea of how it needs to look like. And then we have Rachel that kind of brings it in the middle and bringing the structure, but also that um, human element, aka me, uh, (laughs) feeling good, you know? And um, I think that that's what's so, so special about this organization. I think that for a lot of creators, that's where they kind of get stuck because if, when they start automating things, then it feels disconnected for them from the content, and then you stop being creative. Right. Yeah. But without automating those things, you, you how can you? It's very difficult to get scale. Absolutely. Well, and now everyone's seeing why they needed to hire a, a person in the middle because yes. you you both have very very different approaches, mm-hmm. and it's somebody that has to come in and bridge those two together. Both equally amazing approaches that just need a way to balance each other out. Yeah, and I think when people ask like, mm-hmm. how does it to work with your spouse? Um, I think that was a bit of our struggle in the beginning when it's just you and I because we had such different approaches to this and we just needed someone in the middle to bring it together. To I don't like this point. term someone in the middle. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily. But you are literally in the middle sitting to, in the middle. Yeah. No. <laughs> to, lead, to lead kind of, you know, br- merge both ideas together and then build structure based on that. It's the three of us have different strengths and skill sets. And I think it's l- less so about being in the middle. It's more so about the compliment. I just don't like the term three. being in the middle because it, it makes it, I don't know. I just don't like the way it sounds. It sounds I, negative. I, it, it, yeah, it sounds negative. Like, I, look, I feel that it's, we, we complement each other um, as a team. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, as much as, as much as there's differences between Valeria and I in terms of how we operate, not only from, you know, Valeria is much, you know, obviously much more on the creative side. She's also quite a bit younger than me, not to take anything away from her experience, but we also come from different generations. So quite there's Quite younger, there's a, but I also found my first gray hair today, so. Yes, this is true. Getting there. This is true. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, I, I wish I could tell you it'll be your last, but from my own experience, that's not going to be the case. <laughs> So after COVID, um, you know, we managed, I mean, I was stuck in Miami for six weeks. You were at home with all three kids at home. We actually drove back. I drove home because it was like, oh my God, I can't touch anything. You can't go anywhere. I I mean, the extent that I went, I bought a pee funnel. I I didn't go anywhere. (laughs) I feel like at that point, a lot of small companies or, you know, organizations would kind of be like, you know, this is, let's just walk away from it while we're not, you know, it's not too ahead and we'll figure, we'll reconvene once it's done. So I had my pee funnel in my bag. I had snacks (laughs) and we didn't stop and we just stopped for gas and that was it. And it was, I mean, the news was also was such a fear, you know, it installed so much fear in us of like, if you stop, you will get COVID and you will die. And that's what it seemed like. And so anyway, so we took that time. I came home. We were all, we couldn't see each other anyways, but Mm -hmm. you know, we, what you did say is, you know, I can't create with all three kids at home. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't, you know, still maintain and and create content for my partners, let alone organic content when I'm a teacher and a cook and a housekeeper Mm -hmm. and all of these things at home. And so that's where we then said, okay, let's think about what this looks like next. And, you know, won't go through all those details, but that's how you guys ended up 
here mm-hmm. in Florida and Miami. There's a lot of stuff in between. And there's a lot of stuff in between. But I honestly feel like, you know, fast forwarding to being in Miami, yeah. the, the summary of all this is I think not, we couldn't be in a better place. We've all had those moments where you catch a whiff of something and you have that sinking feeling where you do a silent prayer that your deodorant doesn't fail you. Enter Lumi, today's sponsor. Their whole body deodorant is making it so none of us ever have to worry about BO again. Unlike certain other deodorants, Lumi is powered by mandelic acid to control odor in a new way. Lumi delivers outrageous 72-hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet and yes, even your privates. In fact, it was patients' concern about private part odor that originally inspired the OBGYN who invented Lumi. Fast forward six years and her game-changing whole body deo has now earned over 300,000 five-star reviews from people like me, who love feeling confident from head to toe. My favorite scents are the mint cucumber and lavender sage. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice and free shipping. As a special offer for my listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code Valeria at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% of your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code Valeria. This is nice. Well, thank you very much. I'm ready for the rest of my day. But it's also important to... To mention that, again, we've also been through um, a few life stages together. When we, we, when we met you, you mm-hmm. were engaged, newly yep. engaged. And then, yes, we had COVID. Yes, mm-hmm. we had this company where we had all these visions based on kind of our understanding of how it could be and how it can look like. And then you were also transitioning into a mother, you mm-hmm. got pregnant, right? So there was just so many changes yeah. in such short amount of time. And no, it's I, been four years that you moved countries. I got married and had two children in those four years. Yeah. Um, and there's been lots of ups and downs. I mean, mm-hmm. anyone who's an entrepreneur will be lying if they said it's not easy and that there's not, uh, that it is easy and that there's not those ups and downs. So we've definitely had our fair share. I love, I still remember the day when you told Gary that you were pregnant mm-hmm. and he came out. I remember I was with the kids and he's like, He was so excited. He's like, I have something to tell you. I was like, oh my God, what did you do? It's like, Rachel's pregnant. And it was such a, it was a really beautiful journey for us as well, because like we've gone through it Mm -hmm. ourselves. And then we were beside you when you were going through it, but it was um, five boys between the, between the (laughs) Yeah, all (laughs) boys. Gary, were you excited when Rachel told you that she's pregnant? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I was excited. I, I, like, I don't know how to elaborate on that. I mean, no, but I, I think, well, I mean, even in terms of our our structure, I mean, it's no secret that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of anxiety and fear when it comes to women, especially that mm-hmm. come into startups and into these positions that are starting families. It's it's kind of like a complicated. Police no, that's end. what I was going to say. I think, you know, I was so nervous. Mm. Um, and so I was so nervous to tell you, especially because, you know, it happened a lot faster, you know, very lucky, but it happened a lot faster. And so I was so nervous to tell you because I got pregnant, you know, I started in January and by the summer I was married and pregnant. Like that's <laughs> very fast. And you came to my wedding and you're like, oh my God, you're pregnant at your wedding. <laughs> it was just all very fast. Um, and, you know, working in tech, especially before, and, you know, this could be an entire podcast episode on its own, but women aren't treated amazing in the tech, uh, you know, atmosphere. And I think that that's changing, but I was traveling a ton. You know, one of the reasons why I did want to switch jobs is I looked at myself, I'm like, I was in Dubai for a month and then I was in Portugal and then I was at South by, you know, I was at conferences and I was constantly traveling and meetings and dinners. And I looked at myself in the mirror one day, I'm like, this, this isn't sustainable Mm -hmm. for anybody, let alone a female that wants a family. So um, I looked in the mirror and that was part of, you know, when I met you, that was exactly that stage where I realized I need a shift for my own work, you know, balance. And how, how am I going to find something? So on the flip side, I'm on the other end saying, how am I going to find something that's going to fit my evolving life, but I also want to be extremely successful. Mm -hmm. And how am I going to find that balance of success at home and at work? Um, and so coming in and, and finding you guys and then, you know, telling 
Gary, I was so nervous. I know I told you the other day and you didn't even know, but I was so nervous. I was in a meeting with Gary and we are back to back to back. It's COVID. Yeah. We're on constant video calls. Um, I took a pregnancy test and it was in the back. It was on my <laughs> desk um, in the meeting the entire time. Yeah. And I get off this meeting with Gary and I look at my desk. I'm like, oh my God, I have this <laughs> test here and he's going to see that I'm pregnant and he's going to fire me. And, you know, he he needs somebody to support and they need, I can't you know, believe that it was so crazy. You would think that I would fire you because you got pregnant. Well, like, and obviously you wouldn't, but- it's just that thought when you're female and you're 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 ingrained to feel like you can't do both. Mm -hmm. But I think that's very wrong in society. It's funny because I was just ha I had this conversation with a guest of mine. Actually, her the podcast went up this morning. Her name is uh, Kate Bursky, and um, she she sold her company for 150 million dollars. It's a shampoo company, and her and I were talking. And so now what she does is just, I'll just quickly get, then get back to this. What she does is she has um, she's become a thought leader. She's become a content creator. And uh, she's writing a book called 30 Phobia about turning 30. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she talked about was this, this, I guess, I mean, she called, I, I believe she, she referred to it as an inequality where women are, it's a real like detriment that's really negative that women, because women bear children, they have this situation where their careers, you know, take somewhat of a, of a, I don't want to say a nosedive, but it definitely, you know. It's a problem. No, right? if you want to be a career-oriented woman, it is a fact, right? Mm -hmm. like if you're the one having the child. You're the one going through, you know, we have two yeah. pregnant employees right now. You're the one going through yeah. pregnancy and birth and postpartum. And I had kids a year apart. That was extremely that difficult was, and yeah. wild journey. And so yeah. to come back to work and no mat leaves, you know, it's it's not common to feel like you can do both. Um, yeah. I, anyway, I know you were talking about the other day, but just feeling grateful that you, that I feel like I can do both. And at the same time, because it's not possible to do it all. And I know that you and I both know that and we have the support that we need. Um, but be able to feel successful as a mom and at work is the best feeling for me, at least in the world. Absolutely. When you when you came, when you and I had that conversation, mm -hmm. it was actually, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that you came to me before you came to Valeria. I would think that you would go to Valeria. Now that I think about it, yeah. it would have made more sense for you to go to like your fellow woman. But at the time I was COO. So we were working, I mean, we worked together so much now, yeah. but we really worked in tandem before. Whereas now mm -hmm. our dynamic has shifted sure. into, you know, me being CEO since yeah. then. And then, you know, us working together on different projects, which is I'm, I'm so excited for. Um, and it's less of the day-to-day -day operation. So at that mm -hmm. time it was, okay, how is this going to affect right. the day-to-day -day operations? That conversation is going to be with Gary. So when you told me that, and I was like, that's great, you know, fantastic. You, and you started crying. You actually started crying. Did I? And I said, Rachel, why are you crying? Babe, and, hormones. You probably was going to say that doesn't sound like <laughs> well, me. <laughs> well, you said, you said, you said that it was because you were really nervous about it. Yeah. And you thought I would have a, a really, like, I, I would have a bad reaction to it. Like, yeah. I would react mm. badly to it. And I remember saying to you, I said, Rachel, like, I hired a young woman yeah. who was engaged. I kind of understood where this was going. So I, But I had a good friend, um, and I remember this when I had this conversation with you. I had a very good friend who was a very senior executive at a large financial institution in Toronto. And I, you know, well, like I said, that tech circuit where you're going out and you're entertaining and you're going to client dinners, and she had just had a baby. And she said something to me, you know, one night and she said, don't be fooled that as soon as you have a family, as soon as you get married and as soon as you have kids, you're not going to be invited everywhere. And it was just something that I always thought about. And it just was that she was shunned out of the group um, when she became a mom. And so she, she always felt, and we had this, you know, big heart heart and she always felt like she was trying to inch her way back in after having kids and she was just treated so, so differently. Well, why Why was she not invited to? You're talking about like business functions. Into business functions just because they're late at night. They're, it just doesn't work with the lifestyle, right? Like even now, it wouldn't work with my lifestyle, which is why I mentioned I wanted a shift because, we, I mean, you were saying you had a kid's party till 8 p.m. last night. Like I was in bed at 9.30. I want to wake Absolutely. up at 6. So mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work for your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stay out late, you don't develop those relationships. And that's what, you know, certain businesses, I think it's shifting now, but, you know, in a lot like financial institutions, especially it's a boys club, but mm -hmm. it's also just a club and you go out and you stay out and you, you talk to people and you network. And it's now looking back, I'm like, I cannot believe I did this for four years because I'm exhausted even thinking about it. But you can't do that when you're a mom. You can't do that with two kids at home when they're waking up at all hours of the night. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. so it's, it's just... I don't even think they meant to. I think it was just a societal shift that happens of, okay, now this person is not in our club. She's in a different club. 
And what was so nice here is that we're all in that that same you know right. proverbial club where we all are balancing personal and professional. We've I think found a really good way to balance it. While you're saying it, like I am, I'm so <laughs> grateful that we are able to build our own rules to mm -hmm. this company and move and adjust it based on what we need while continuing to evolve and, you know, be successful. Um, did you expect, like what we're doing now, did you kind of see it when you joined in that this is how it's going to look like? No, I saw growth because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have come if I didn't. You know, I like I said, I like opportunity. I like building things. The last company I was at, I was employee number 40. And then a year later, we moved, to, I think we grew to over 300. So I wow. like growth. Yeah. And so for me, growth can mean so many different things. You know, in that company, it was growth in size. It was growth in projects. It was growth in revenue. And then here, it was growth and opportunity. Not that we didn't have all those other ingredients as well, but it was growth and opportunity. And so when I, you know, started reading and I met you about the creator economy and where it's going and, you know, back then compared to right now, even last night, you know, reading about, you know, what's what's on tap for 2024 and what's everyone predicting, I find it such a, a fascinating space because it's always changing. And I just know about myself, and I think all of us are like this, my biggest worry in life is is being stagnant mm -hmm. and just feeling like every day is monotonous. Every day is the exact same thing. That's my biggest fear, I should say. It really is. Like sharks and being <laughs> being in, be, a, in a fear that in a think, state that doesn't I move. I think that it's that's what connects the three of us the most, I feel, mm -hmm. that fear of just staying the same. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash not alone and get on your way to being your best self. We take pride in working hard to keep our bodies healthy. We eat right. We exercise daily, take vitamins. But generally, we're not taught to see our mental health as something that needs similar care and attention. Getting professional help from the right therapist allows you to take time to better your life. The idea behind Not Alone is about sharing the relatable issues we all experience but don't always feel comfortable talking about. You can take it a step further with BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is a huge benefit compared to in-person sessions. Therapy can help you learn more about yourself, including your emotional triggers, behavioral patterns, and how to manage them in a healthy way. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash not alone today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash not alone. In this business and just in this industry as a whole and social media, it would be great if there was just every day was growth, like mm -hmm. just constant growth. But there are times when there are kind of quieter periods. Um, you know, what we've discovered is that this business is very seasonal. Um, kind of audience attention is very seasonal. You know, obviously when COVID hit, that was, I mean, that was like a once in a lifetime thing where all the attention went online because people were at home. Mm -hmm. But it is very seasonal. So yeah, I mean, I really appreciate the growth. And I think for me, if we're getting like really kind of into the weeds of things, I don't like when there's these kind of lulls when there's, you know, but you guys oh, are I really... Know. No, no, I, I know, but you guys are really good about, you know, bringing me back mm -hmm. and making me zoom out to say, okay, yeah, there's this like, you know, short period of, yeah, there hasn't been like some big opportunity where Valeria walks some kind of a carpet or, or we didn't, you know, have this like crazy growth spike. That's what I really enjoy. And I've always enjoyed that throughout my career, but you guys have always been good about bringing me down to right. earth and say, no, zoom I like out. the growth journey that, well, that's what I think it is. It's a journey because even if when you're focusing on literal growth. Yeah, you focusing on literal growth. Actually, the slow down periods for me are my opportunity as a creator to get more creative and to explore different avenues. And I think that for Rachel, someone who is, you know, handling operation and making sure that everyone is, you know, the right people for the job. I feel like when we have a little bit of slowdown, we can then refocus mm -hmm. and really um, hyper focus on the areas 
Because there's so many of them. When I started, we, TikTok didn't really exist. I mean, you weren't on TikTok. It didn't exist at all. You didn't have TikTok. Um, We weren't doing any partnerships on TikTok. There was Mm -hmm. no trending, like the concept of a trending concept didn't exist. So when you look back into when I first started, YouTube is where we really started from, which is where, Mm -hmm. you know, your bread and butter was. And so we were, you know, focusing a lot on building out these like long format, multiple times a week videos. And so when I think of growth, I think of it as how have we changed and adapted to what you know the this the consumer economy wants or mm-hmm. what trends are and so yeah. for me it's learning opportunities and adapting opportunities are for me what fuels me and I get that here every day so that's what I like I study algorithms when I go to sleep at night like it's all very exciting stuff <laughs> what's but, trending what's not trending which yeah, platforms the platforms are out have there, all changed even AI, the platforms we use are completely different Absolutely. than how they once were um, and you know what I always wanted to ask you because I'm curious how you answer the question when someone asks you what do you do for mm-hmm. a living how do you yeah. explain your Depends position in this company. Uh, if my grandparents are asking, <laughs> I was about to say not your grandma. <laughs> yeah, not my grandma. I, you know, I usually say I I work for a personal brand. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it depends, but I, I would say overall, I work for an agency. Mm-hmm. And I do. And so if you separate, because I think it depends who's asking, if somebody says, you know, about you, I mean, you know, how is it like working with Valeria or what's it like? It's I'm building a personal brand. Mm-hmm. When someone says, what do you do for a living? I run a media agency. And that's why uh, what I wanted to kind of expand on, because I feel a lot of people, Mm -hmm. the creator economy is still like so vague for a lot of people. When they think about creators, they still think about, you know, the 15 year old that dances in her bathroom or, um, you know, someone that goes super viral. They have like a season of, you know, their 15 minutes of fame. But this is a whole, like, there's a reason why it's an economy on its own. There's like a whole structure here. So how do you explain to people when they're like, so do you just like schedule Valeria to shoot Honestly, videos in honestly, closet. when you're not around, yeah, um, I describe it as, you know, I run a media agency and I have one client yeah, and that's how it feels, right? And mm-hmm. it feels, you know, even if I had multiple clients, I would need triple the team. It The amount of support, especially when you want to do things that are very, they're, like they're data driven, but they're also um, all in connection to a uh, personal brand. Mm-hmm. So I studied transformational marketing in school. It's a philosophy about building long-term connections. When you're doing content for that purpose and you're not building content just for numbers, you're not building content Mm -hmm. just for growth, and you're building content for a purpose, which for me is the purpose of transformation. And it's that transformational journey. And for you, it's it's literal and it's figural, but for you, it's taking, you know, when you started, you know, 20 something into a 30 something into a mom, your audience is moving with you. And so my point in that is you're not just creating content, you're creating content that's going to actually resonate, mm-hmm. which I think is why we've been able to be so successful because that's what consumers want now. And so building content like that, my point, is it's not easy. It's actually a lot harder to build content that resonates, to build content that's thoughtful, to build content that's on brand, that's going to feel like it's not, you know, from a business perspective, not an ad, but it's just a part of you showing up. It takes a lot more work. And I know everyone in this industry and our clients would say that. It takes a lot more work to do that. So absolutely. Um, when, you know, our team, we have different departments. We run just like an agency would. Um, so mm-hmm. we have production, we have operations, we have business development, client relations. So if you think of, you know, customer success and and sales, we have an 18-person team. So yeah. it's a full-blown agency. Um, and we do everything A to Z that an agency would do. And you just happen to be my my number one client. <laughs> Thank when you. When people ask me, people sometimes ask me, why don't you guys take on more talent? Mm-hmm. I don't have time. <laughs> I, you know, my, I'm my, a full time job. Babe. Yeah. I'm a full time job. Yeah. yeah. You, you definitely really, are a full time job. She really but is. <laughs> I, my, I think my answer is a little more um, romantic. No, not romantic. I'm probably a little more offensive. But, you know, what I tell people when they ask me, you know, why don't, why don't you sign on more talent? And I said, you know, it's really enough for me to have to deal with my wife on this. If I had to deal with other people's wives, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that would just probably just break me altogether. I think that the answer also is we all have very similar work ethic and we think really big. And I don't think a lot of people understand the amount of investment mentally, emotionally and physically this business requires. Mm -hmm. So for us, we're all aligned on how much we all need to work. But with other talents, I mean, I see it in Hollywood, right? How they're all like running around just trying to make sure that the talent doesn't like just quit the next day. 
um, which is a little bit how this works too here in Valeria Inc. Because <laughs> I have <laughs> say, my, that's so I have my <laughs> moments. But at the end of the day, like we all are showing up every single day. But we all come from immigrant families yes. who all have very similar, you know, different but similar origin and success stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's what we all show up with, which is not super common. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you feel like if you look back at some of our biggest wins or fails? Mm-hmm. Does anything come to mind? A lot of failures. Um, I feel, you know, every business, you know, that has been successful and is still on the map probably has a lot of failures that they've learned from. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I had to focus on, you know, a few areas, I think our biggest win is the team that we've built. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we, you know, have learned and we're honest in what we need and the amount of support we need. I saw a quote um, from Cody Sanchez actually this morning that I sent you guys, but the the role that you have as a founder is to remove yourself from as many responsibilities and jobs as you can. Um, And I think that building a team that we're able to do that so that we can grow into the entrepreneurs that all three of us want to grow into, I think that's our biggest strength and our biggest win, especially in the agency world, but especially, you know, I'm coming from tech agencies, Mm -hmm. backgrounds, We've had employees with us for five years, four years, six years, you know, yet even precede me. That's not common. I know that that we're really um, used to it, but it's really not common. People jump around. It's like, you know, workforce is like Tinder. There should be like a Tinder for jobs, (laughs) um, which I guess is LinkedIn, but like even faster. But, you know, people jump from job to job to job and we just don't have that. So I think our team is our absolute biggest strength. Um, And then our biggest failure is when a team member, you know, on the opposite side, when a team member doesn't share that same vision or when it's a a role that we shouldn't actually be doing because we shouldn't be entering into that business. Um, At times in the past, we haven't acted fast enough to -hmm. make that change. And I think that that's something that we really learned. And I don't think we do that anymore. So obviously the e-commerce business being part of it, Mm -hmm. we had amazing people in that business, but we were trying to do something that wasn't our strength. So I think yeah. any time that we've, you know, it's both like the, the team um, as our win, but any time that we veered from what our core strengths are is where we've failed. Yeah. Um, and so if I've learned anything in, in life, honestly, let alone here, is just know what you're good at and just do more of that, honestly. So that's where that's where I think I sometimes disagree with you. Um, because if you don't, if you don't venture oh, yeah. off into new things, then you won't discover you know, um, you you won't kind of discover new opportunities, and I, I think or that, realize what you're good at if you realize what you're not yeah, good at. <laughs> I, I don't regret. Like I think we did the we did the clothing brand for about two and a half years, and I don't regret any of it. And I don't regret, I you know, the money that we that we invested in. You know, inevit- inevitably lost. Um, although we did millions a year in revenue there, um, I don't regret any of it. We had to do that. That was an experience that we had to mm-hmm. kind of go through. I'm really happy we did it, but I still stand by. And this is where you and I kind of. It's. I don't say. I don't want to say disagree on, but you're always telling me, Gary, like, like we have to first do the stuff that we already said we're going to do before you can start introducing mm-hmm. new opportunities into the business. Where I'm, I'm a big believer in. No, no, no. We we have to simultaneously do everything. Yeah, Valeria, at the very beginning of this conversation, said, okay, you know, beginning of the year, we always have. I always come to Florida. We always have this big meeting where we talk about the year ahead. Um, and the, every year, I'm like, okay, guys, the word of the year is focus. <laughs> And every year you're like, really? Like as if you haven't heard that before, because every year I say the exact same thing. I'm like, yeah. we know what works. We know what we have to do to get there. And I think that we're at that really great point where we we do know what we have to do mm-hmm. in order for our business to be successful. And that's where we're grateful that we have Gary and that I have Gary who can step out and say, okay, while you're doing what we know how to do, let me go try things, you know, that maybe we don't and we can either learn and it can become one of our strengths or mm-hmm. sure it fails and we've learned from it. Identifying opportunities, I think it's very, um, it's one of the things that also kept us as curious and motivated and um, helped us evolve as well as a company and as individuals and entrepreneurs. Because I think that, again, Rachel, you are so like deep in the trenches of the business where I am very focused on creative and that's to still, have a, you're still deep in the trenches. We, we, I am deep in the trenches. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like she we're is all the trench. So it, I am, exactly. <laughs> but having you being able, Gary, having Gary being able to step out and kind of see what's going on in the world and what's mm-hmm. around us, you know, that's, I think that's, uh, that's an amazing uh, part to have. What I would have done before when we first started working together is I would have come to you and I said, hey, Rachel, we're building an academy. And you'd be like, what do you mean we're building an academy? I'd say, yeah, we're going to build an academy. So I need everybody to kind of come together and we got to build this academy. And, you know, you would have said to me, well, no, no, but 
but how about the existing stuff that they have to do? I'd say, well, they, you know, they'll do all that stuff. Plus, we're going to build the academy. Mm-hmm. And I think <laughs> I've, you know, where I've where I've matured, um, you know, as an entrepreneur and operationally, is to hear that feedback from you and to say, okay, I have to leave Rachel to do what she's doing, and I have to now go and you know figure out how to do this. So, hence, it actually took me two years to find the project manager, and he's here. He's over there. His name is Alex. Woo, Alex. Um, you know, it took me two years to find the person that I felt comfortable with and I felt confident would be a good leader mm-hmm. for that. So I think that, w- that was a really important lesson, I think, in business. Yeah, so now general. when you come to me, I'm like, great, go for it. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and on the point of the academy, I think this is one of those opportunities that is very obvious and also something we crave. Like I Mm. crave it as a creator and having so many creator friends and being in the industry and seeing how vague everything is and no one really understands what they're doing and how Mm. to grow. And they're at a mercy of so many outside kind of forces. Gary recognizing that we have so much information and learnings throughout the years that we're able to collect to put it all together and bring it to the world and help to kind of, you know, really build, um, how do you call it, like a standard. Yeah, I always say, you know, I've always worked for businesses this way. So I'm taking this, you know, from a couple past jobs, but we're building the plane while flying it. Mm -hmm. And Gary, what you're doing is actually making that manual, um, you know, so that we can teach, you know, other people to do the same thing, which I think, you know, Valeria and I doing this every day, um, all the time, aren't stopping to think of that. And I think it's going to be a really cool you know, project for us to work on? I think so. I think, I mean, there are two things that are kind of, um, that are driving me to want to, to want to do this. One, the kind of the online education space just continues to blow up, you know, as Mm -hmm. just as the, you know, the creator economy as a whole, but the online education space continues to blow up and consumers have a hunger for, you know, very specific education. I agree with you. And I think that's where um, I'm excited about it to be able to share and to, to help people to build a business. Because that's another thing. We are talking about it earlier with Rachel. Now, the creator economy, there's so many levels to it. And you can play in so many different arenas based on what it is that you want. For us, we wanted to build a sustainable brand. Mm -hmm. We wanted something that will stand the test of time, something that I can... um, evolve and develop into my, when I was 20, when I'm in my 30s now, into the 40s, into 50s. This is not something that I look at being like, you see how she yeah, stopped the 50s? Yeah. You see how she stopped well, the yeah, because then I'll be like, sayonara. <laughs> sayonara? Sayonara. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think people don't really realize, I think a lot of, you know, people in your, in your sphere don't realize this isn't a hobby for Valeria. I think that's a big misconception. I think a lot of influencers... Um, Or, you know, the misconception is, you know, they marry a wealthy, you know, older man, you know, in this case, and that Valeria is just doing this as a hobby, but Mm -hmm. that's just couldn't be further from the truth. This is, Gary and I believe so much in you as a human and you as a talent that we are putting our careers and our Mm -hmm. energy into building that. And Mm -hmm. that's a very, very different story than just, you know, being a creator. And I'm not diminishing being a creator. It's, as I know, a very, very full-time job. Um, But... It's more than that. This is building a long-term legacy brand. And when I first started, that was one of the things that I knew, you know, for me, it's so important. The people that I work with, and when Gary told me, when I asked you why you're doing this, you know, I want to leave a legacy for my children. And Mm -hmm. that's what got me. Um, And for me, you know, it's so interesting when you have kids, you spend your whole life wanting, you know, to impress your parents. And then you have kids and all you want is for them to be proud of you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think it's such a bigger story for all of us than just, you know, having a following. And I think that that's what what's, makes it different. I really do. I think that that's what's different about what we're doing, you know, compared to other, you know, influencers in any category is we are building a long-term brand, just like, you know, I would have learned in school. Like, you see blue and, and yellow and you think Ikea. We're building that type of a level of personal brand, in my mind at least, mm-hmm. um, that's going to be there for a very long time. Um, and it, it's a business. This is not a hobby. This isn't, if it was oh, a hobby, absolutely. you wouldn't be doing this. And it takes a lot time. of time. And that's where I think uh, it's important to recognize recognize and to put it out there, the fact that there are so many different ways to do it. You know, if you're 15 and you just, you blow up and you just want to, you know, um, capitalize on the attention, Mm -hmm. that's great. If you want to build something that's long lasting and again, the legacy, that's amazing. There's just so, if you wanted to have it as a side hustle and make your X amount of dollars every month, 
That is yeah, also if you came possible. to me tomorrow and said, you know, I want to grow, you know, the, our number one goal was I want 2 million followers in 60 days. Wow. I would know how to do that for you. Mm-hmm. I really would. Yeah. Um, but that's not our. That would be very sensational. Exactly. You, you, but that's not our, our business. Valeria had recently had Vivian too. Um, the rich, rich, rich BFF. You, you had her on your podcast. And I remember listening to that podcast and she had said that uh, creators have this very kind of narrow time to make money. And she was kind of criticizing creators who spend money with this assumption that it's going to last forever. Mm-hmm. And she said that what they don't understand is that this is going to end one day and that's it. And they'll have spent all their money on fancy stuff. And that's that. Whereas, you know, she's saying, well, these creators should be really saving their money and investing and planning for a time when they won't have this career. Mm-hmm. And yeah, rem- she was saying how there's like a lifespan. But but she was implying that it's a very short lifespan. And but for a lot of these, a lot of creators in that space. This is correct. Yeah. It is. Well, I mean, I think I think she was more talking about, I mean the overnight successes, the you know uh, and the uh, OnlyFans. She was talking about OnlyFans. She specifically (laughs) mentioned OnlyFans. And I would think that that would probably have like the shortest life cycle, um, Mm -hmm. you know, for a creator. But I remember when you when I listened to that and then I spoke with you afterwards and I said, like, what do you think of that? And you gave me the answer that I was hoping to hear from you where you said, well, yeah, but we're, what, what I'm building with, like what we're building with my personal brand is a long-term thing and I'll be doing this, you know, for, for decades to come. Mm-hmm. And that when you look at kind of traditional celebrities, the pre, pre kind of internet at scale celebrities, that's what they've built. And, mm-hmm. you know, there are a couple of names that come to mind. But I also think that, you know, with this, with this business, one of the things that motivated me when you started this, because there were a couple of reasons that like when you started and I saw that kind of first, um, that first revenue come in from brand deals. And then it was further reinforced to me when I heard Gary Vaynerchuk talk about that, like human ink, and he was referring to influencers and personal brands will be multi-billion dollar mm-hmm. businesses. Mm-hmm. Now, with all that being said, that was kind of where my mind went mm-hmm. when, when I was thinking about you develop, like us developing your personal brand. But on the, on the, now what's happened, and it's really interesting to see this, is it isn't just about hitting those peaks and having millions of followers and making millions of dollars. What I'm really encouraged by and what I'm really what I really like seeing is I like seeing specifically women because I pay more attention to kind of the female millennium millennial demographic mm-hmm. because that's your demographic. They're making employment income, like high end okay. employment income, but without actually being employees, they're working on their own terms and they're becoming their own entrepreneurs. So that's what's really encouraging. And I see that happening for the industry. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, the kind of sub effect is seeing how there are more opportunities for other professions, right? Mm -hmm. So we have our, we have lawyers that we use for like, there's now lawyers that specialize in only influencers or social media people, right? There's also the aspect of, uh, you know, we have an amazing business development team of our own that we've, that we've trained and grew. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, again, there's just all these different aspects of how this economy will continue well, to I think, grow. Well, I think back to, you know, being in school, like I said, I studied transformational marketing. And I remember um, there was somebody in my class who was more of like an artist. Mm-hmm. And they were, you know, asking the professor and kind of poking, you know, at the professor. And the professor said, I want everyone to like take a, a minute, close your eyes and think of, and sorry, this, this person was saying, I don't interact with a lot of brands. I'm very like brand free. I try to be, you know, buy local. I try and not, you know, use a lot of brands and, and come across a lot of brands on a day-to-day basis. And she said, okay, I want everyone to do me a favor. Close your eyes and picture all the different brands and, and logos that you've seen today. This was like at 11 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And she made us write down. So she opened it. We all opened our eyes. And she made us look in the notebook and write down all the different brands that we could see. This was down to like if you saw public transportation, you would put the TTC. You saw, you know, paint on the ground. You saw an ad. You saw, you, you opened up. You put on your watch. You Like everything that you did. You put on a ring. What brand was that? You put on a mascara. You put on a lipstick. You put on a sweater. You put on a pair of underwear. What? How many brands are you actually interacting with on a day-to-day basis? Mm-hmm. And she made us all do this exercise. And obviously the exercise was taking too long. We had to stop. And so she said, this is my point. What is going to change in the advertising world is that you will not realize that you are being advertised to. Mm. And this was 10 years ago. And so when I came across this opportunity, I always also thought back to that exercise in school from this teacher thinking the ad world is changing. And the ad world is changing from spending, you know, millions of dollars on a Super Bowl ad for 30 seconds, you know, when someone's going to fast forward to what does this 
future of advertising look like? And it looks like that conversation to me. It looks like, wow, you know, if I even do this exercise myself and I do it all the time, you know, being in this business, I've come across 200 brands already today for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that to me is what's so interesting about this industry is it's a walking advertisement. It's the walking future of media yeah. for me. Um, and so I look at it obviously from that business side of there are so many opportunities to build a long-term magazine or a long-term brand that can help brands, but also help consumers who are just getting savvier and savvier. And so on the flip side of that, it's, I don't do anything. I don't know what you, I don't make a recipe anymore without looking it up online. Like I have mm-hmm. cookbooks lining up my kitchen. I don't parent. I have parent, I have saved folders in my Instagram for parenting hacks, for parenting tricks mm-hmm. for, you know, when I was on the airplane here with my two kids, I had, you know, activities and Lego binder hacks and activities. Oh my God, you did the Lego binder. I did the Lego binder. (laughs) It didn't work. Um, But I did the Lego binder. You know, I did all of these things and recipes and business and I have business uh, saved pro, you know, things. And so it just made me realize the the amount that people are turning to online for information. And so back to, you know, what we were talking about of the different types of creators. There are creators that create for entertainment. There are creators that create to go viral. There are creators that create to make a, you know, income that's a high income right now as just their income method. We're creating a long-term brand that is going to be growing in that same way that the the ad world is growing. What would you say we're doing? I think we're working on our, I mean, we're already kind of working on our long-term goals. We've already realized a lot of long-term goals that were long-term goals just a couple of years ago. Um, I think a lot of it is scale. There's deeper integrations with brands. To Rachel's point, like, you know, marketing has become, and and kind of brand development has become contextual. But it's it's scale and it's continuing to build your celebrity brand. What do you feel like are the biggest like hurdles for creators based on like all our years just watching our own mistakes but also seeing everyone else for creators for creators you never stop i mean you always have to create and that's something that gary and i you know in building this academy are talking to a lot of creators don't stop don't be discouraged it's so easy to be discouraged and to stop creating content um Mm -hmm. i see so many people even in you know my own sphere saying you know it's cringy to put myself out there i can't look at myself without cringing yeah, you feel the exact same way about your old content. I know you've told me that, but mm-hmm. you kept going. And a lot of, you know, this does not happen overnight. Success never happens overnight, really true success. There's always a story behind it. There's always, you know, something, I think. You just can't stop. Um, and so I forget your question, but that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good answer. It's true. What it, What does hurdle mean? Hurdle? It's a challenge. Like an obstacle, a challenge. I, I, think, I think for creators, the biggest obstacle, the biggest hurdle, um, is themselves. Is that an ancient world? Yeah. Yeah. That's an a good ancient, way of putting it. Did you say an ancient world? Ancient No, because I, I know hurdle. you. I know you. You're thinking Roman Empire and yes. you're thinking like the, the is, horses and you're like galloping hurdle? along. And then I still <laughs> don't understand that when you asked me about the Roman Empire, I don't, I never understood that trend. Um, I think, I think. Gary's Roman Empire is Oprah. I don't even Truly. know what that means, but <laughs> I, you know, I think I think the biggest challenge that any creator has is themselves and is their kind of their own fear of of uh, criticism, uh, imposter syndrome, worrying that they're not good enough. And, you know, just to my own credit, I mean, I I I spent a lot of time coaching you through that and and I do much less now, but every now and then I have to remind you who you are. Mm-hmm. And I think that for creators, one of the things that one of the things that we'll definitely be talking about in the academy is that you have to find your champion. Like you, you know, and, and a lot most creators don't do that. They don't like you didn't find your champion. I just kind of invaded. I married my champion. No, thank you. But I just kind of invaded the whole situation, and I kept telling you you're the best. Um, but your mom was doing that too since you were born. Uh, but I think I think I think for creators, I think that's the biggest challenge is they don't have they don't a believe in themselves, and they don't have someone who believes in them, and that someone. Um, if they do have that someone, that person isn't vocal enough. Mm. Mm. So I think I think creators need to find that that champion, that person who really believes in them and is constantly reminding them and telling them that they're what they're doing is worthwhile. I think for me, um, I find that a lot of people are very 
scared of changes. Mm -hmm. And this is an industry that literally the base of it all, the foundation is change. Uh, Technology, platforms, different, you know, methods, uh, proven trends, concepts, everything. Every day we wake up and we're like, okay, there's a new feature here. There's a new thing. Um, And I think that that can be very uh, discouraging to your Mm -hmm. point, but also very scary, very like anxiety driven type of activity to constantly do uh, and be part of. So it's, uh, I think that's really difficult. And I find that because we build such an amazing team around us, me personally, I'm able to pivot fast. And we're all in general, I feel like the essence of our company is pivoting. Like every time we have a new person in, I know Rachel was always like, listen, things change here. So you got to be okay with change. Um, And I find in general for creators, as a creator, putting yourself out there every single day is the most humbling experience in the world because to be successful, you have to have consistency, you have to show up every single day, and you don't feel like showing up every single day. So you truly put yourself out there in such a raw, vulnerable way. And even when it's not presented vulnerably, it still like takes so much energy out of you um, emotionally, you know? So I think it's like, in a way, you're sharing yourself with the world every single day. No, if any of the the team or any, you know, if any of them you know, finds you frustrating. <laughs> if any of them is having any challenge, you know, whatsoever with, you know, with the company or with, you know, you know, Valeria's running late or, mm-hmm. you know, because it's so easy to sit behind the camera. Mm-hmm. And that's what I say. It's easy for me to sit here, but I could never do what you do and be in front of the camera all day and be on and be, you know, entertaining and funny and charismatic and charming. Um, and so anytime that the team is like, okay, you know, Valeria's running 20 minutes late or she's not so into it today, the first thing I always tell them is, Imagine if every single day you were to wake up and you were to be hilarious and you were to be charming and you had to perform. And the second I say that, they're like, yeah, no, don't worry. Does she need the day off? (laughs) Um, And so I think, you know, I think it's something that people don't really think of. If you're Mm -hmm. a creator, the amount of content, like you said, and the amount of consistent content that you have to put out there, you also have to really, really be able to be harsh. And if, again, you don't have somebody in your corner, you have to do it for yourself, which is very difficult. You have to critique yourself. Yeah. Because it's all about, you know, not just creating any kind of content, but it's what content hits. Who is your audience? Mm -hmm. Um, What do they want from you? What is the content that does well? Let's, you know, Gary always says, every time we're on a call with someone, do me a favor and go look at what content does the best. And they always start talking. He's like, no, literally, open up your phone, Mm -hmm. go into the, the analytics Look at your reels. What is the top performing content genre that talking, you have? This, this is when you're talking, talking to, creators, yeah, yes, to any yeah. creator. And it's and it's so interesting because that's a question that clearly they don't think about a lot because they're always like, oh, you actually want me to go in and look at it. You're like, yes, go in and look at it. I'm always shocked why they don't continue doing what is successful. Because it's so hard, I think, to do it because for yourself. Because that's the thing. You're just, you're, your for, focus and attention, it's, you know, flying a plane while building it as well. Most of them don't even build it. They're flying mm-hmm. with one seat and a wheel and hoping to get somewhere, you know. Yeah. There's maybe one wing if there's a And there's assistant. a really nice balance, for sure, of, you know, we always talk about it, but just be yourself. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's our mantra. It's, you know, be yourself, show up, I think, in business and for you and in, in the content that we create. It's don't pretend um, mm-hmm. that's not going to get you so far. Just like show up and be who you are. And Gary, you always say that to Valeria. Like, just be you. If you mispronounce things, if you say things and you want it, just do it. Just mm-hmm. show up and be yourself. Well, Valeria, what's what's the biggest challenge um, for you doing what you do? What's, what's the biggest challenge? For me personally, what's sure. the biggest challenge? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Let me, where do I begin? I mean, begin first, with the most challenging. The thing. most challenging is the fact that this goes against my nature as a person in general. Um, it's not something that I thought I'll ever do, even though I come from kind of the modeling industry. You still kind of hiding behind a character, right? Like you don't really show up as yourself. You're just there as a canvas. Mm-hmm. Um, And I just never thought that I will put myself in a position or build a career around just being me and being open and having the world have access to me. That's just not my, you know how I'm easily drained. Like I'm not a very, I'm not an extrovert by no means. So this takes a lot of mental capacity for me, but for me also what I love about this job is the fact that it challenges the like everything that I believed about myself. And it helped me evolve. It helped me to 
put mirrors in front of me. Um, and um, that part I really enjoy. But yeah, the challenge is honestly just showing up every single day. Would you agree that with the statement that there's, there's no progress and comfort? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But human nature is to resist change. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, or discomfort. So I think that it's, that's the beauty of, of life and this profession in general. I'm very grateful that I'm here and I'm not, you know, in a career where I sit behind a desk and just do my check you, marks. You, you tried that for a week. Oh yeah. It was a long week. Where? <laughs> When I was doing the holistic nutrition thing. Oh, yeah. When she was yeah. consulting, she had her one client and said, I don't want to do this anymore. I had yeah. three. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> I'm so happy that lasted only one week. Sometimes that really works. Other times there's absolutely friction because you're like, I'm super creative. I have this idea. And I'm like, cool, but it doesn't work. <laughs> and then we're going, you know, not actually head to t- head to head because it's a 30 second conversation. And we always figure it out. But I think that's the biggest balance of, you know, finding a way out of the chaos. So, you know, Valeria and you, honestly, um, and you, that's why you hired me. Like you're not great operationally. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you need a lot of structure, but also resist structure. We're just disorganized. You're disorganized. I'm like, hey, yeah, I guess if you're, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm actually trying to say. You're disorganized people. Um, open up your jewelry drawer. And I think that that's, you know, all somebody needs to know about you. So honestly, <laughs> the audience is it every single day. So just yeah. look at her car. Yeah, you're disorganized and I'm okay, like relax. the most, and I'm the most organized. I mean, I don't want to say you the most so organized person, organized, but like come into scary. my house, it's a very, very different story. So I think that's yes. for me the biggest challenge because I'm like, let me take my A-type organizational brain and try and work with somebody the complete opposite. And, mm-hmm. and you know what? It actually ends up being this really amazing balance, but also She's really good. Challenge. Blair is really good at organizing an outfit. Yeah, because that's creative. Yeah, I know. But when she leaves the room after she's done putting that outfit together, yeah. then somebody needs to go in there. Yes, absolutely. And straighten it up. Don't Clean up the mess. Get, I'm going to pull my phone right now and I'm going to show all the photos I took throughout these three days of stuff that you just leave around the house. Yeah. I started sending you, yeah. so I don't I, I don't nag you vocally anymore. Yeah. I, I just send a, I, you photos. I put up a story about that. So I, it's better I tell you now than have to continue the charade. I'm actually doing it on purpose to give you an additional thing to do so you can take pictures. You've been doing it on purpose for it's the all past for the 11 content. years? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. are a visionary. I wow. <laughs> really long, I, I long-term do it, vision. I do, long-term it, vision. I do it so that you'll get better at photography because you need to photograph inanimate objects. Yeah. Quarter drink and coffee is yeah. very aesthetic. Mm, I know. Truly. If you can make that look good, Valeria, mm-hmm. this is why you make everything else look good. I also want to, you know, break the stigma that being an entrepreneur is this like fairy journey um, and, you know, everybody should do it. And while we want to teach everybody and and show them that they absolutely can, it's not an easy road. Mm-hmm. And, you know, entrepreneurism is, is romanticized a lot um, and it's a journey. And so I think, you know, for me, it's understanding that it takes a lot of work. Anything that is super successful was a lot of work to probably get there. Um, and so it's a lot more complicated and a lot um, more than people see just in front of the camera. Absolutely. I love the daily fluctuations <laughs> of mood and mental health that is happening in our profession, but it also makes us way more resilient. Your your podcast is called Not Alone. And how would you how would you describe this podcast? She's just making you feel like you're not alone. That's it? No. Um, Well, the podcast is about sharing the experiences and events that shape shape people. Uh, Because I feel like all of us as a collective, like we all go through very similar learnings and, and events in our lives, but because we don't open up and talk about them, we often feel like we're going through it alone. And I think that that that's the essence of the personal brand in general, right? We Mm -hmm. want to be that safe space, feel like, you know, we're all together. And even if the experience is not exactly the same, um, we can learn something from each other. So having these conversations with uh, really interesting, fascinating resilient people, um, some also experts that can just leave us feeling like, okay, I'm not alone in this in the way I feel and the way I behaved or behaving and the way I just go through life. That's the essence of not alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of sharing collective experiences. Yeah. 
I think it's also, you know, from a business standpoint, but, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's... Type A. Valeria and I talk all the time. We were actually talking to Celine just before this about how happy I am to not be a 20-something. Mm. Um, so not giving my... But a 30-something. And I have never been happier or more comfortable in my own skin than I am now. And if I were to say that when I was 22, I wouldn't... I would think, oh my God, you know, mid-30s, you know, is not going to be a time where, you know, this is the time, this is, the, you know, the best time of your life when you're, you know, in your 20s. And getting older, for me, you know, I've been lucky, has only been better. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, Valeria's audience, as they grow with you, whether they come in through, you know, TikToks younger or, you know, different platforms are an older, you know, skew older, they're growing with you no matter what stage they're in. So they're either, you know, in one stage and they're growing to the next. And so as women, especially, but just for people in general, I think it's so special to have a place that, you know, not using that, you know, not alone, but it really is, is that it's that feeling of, movement. And it's mm. that feeling of um, progressing and learning and just coming into your own through the next stage. And that doesn't mean that it's like forever, but it's just, what is the next stage? And other people are also in it. And it's exciting to see, you know, you had white hair wisdom. And I love seeing, you know, through Celine's eyes, even looking back at what I was in my 20 something, and then looking at what I'll be in my 50 something, you make it feel exciting to go through those stages. My longtime mentors, said that the number one key to success is time blocking your schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, I think, you know, part of it is I wouldn't have time for myself if I didn't do that. So even if it's on a weekend and same thing, if I realize, you know what, Saturday night, my husband's going to be out and that's a perfect time for me to approve an hour long piece of content. I schedule that in for Saturday night. Mm -hmm. It's all about working with a schedule that works for me rather than me trying to fit things in. Yeah. And that change in approach has been a complete lifestyle change for me. That's huge. I love that. The other day, actually, Gary said, you know, I really think that, you know, we can teach somebody this skill, um, you know, and how we were talking about creator method and we're talking about everything, you know, we can teach somebody, you know, any skill. And I said, okay, I'm going to put you in a course to teach you about operations. Mm. And I'm going to teach you, you know, you're going to learn how to be the best operator. And he's like, okay, fine. I see your point. <laughs> well, but hold on a second. Like, I have to defend myself because you've been calling me a crappy operator now for the last hour and a half. <laughs> I just, I just want, I want, you know, for people listening to know that prior to meeting you, I actually was an operator. I, like when I was your age, I was operating businesses Yes. and I had, you know, a reasonable amount of success in those businesses. So but you didn't have the time to also be a visionary, which you are now. No, no, well, no, but no, I was everything. But I'll tell you the differences. The difference is I was younger. I had more time. Um, and I was an operator. I was a decent operator for the state of the world of business at that yeah. time. And I feel right now the world is moving a lot faster. There's mm -hmm. a lot more automation and software. Why are you laughing at me? Because I'm just thinking, you know, he's having so such a hard time with punctuation with the team, you know. with That the, was just a nonsense. <laughs> so this is just one of those it's things. It's not nonsense. Like, you okay. can't not no. use exclamation marks. No, that's <laughs> ridiculous. So I, I want to tell this story. I want to I want to tell this story <laughs> that one day, one day Rachel calls me up and she says, listen, the team is really upset. Um, with the way that you're talking to them. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? How do I talk to the team that they're so upset? Well, they thought they were always doing something wrong. So it wasn't upset. It was just, why am I, why yes. is Gary constantly and, not happy with and my I, work? And I said, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And Rachel, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what she said to me. Rachel said to me, Gary, you use periods at the end of your sentences. I said, what? <laughs> she goes, you use periods at the end of your sentences. And I said, yeah, Rachel, because that's the English language. It's called punctuation. I go, what should I use? And you said to me, guys, I'll never forget this. Rachel said to me, you should be using exclamation marks. <laughs> I said, what? I should be using exclamation marks. I'm sorry. If somebody says to you, nope, with a period at the end of it, is yeah. that a happy sentence? Do you think you did a great job if someone, if you're like, what can I get you? Can I yeah. get you anything else? Can I do anything better? Nope. Yeah, period. Period. Or, nope. Ooh. Nope. Kiss the death. Yeah. Hold on, but if no. so, so oh, let's good. Say, you're so great. So, I don't need so anything else from you. if I text someone and we have a scheduled call at 1 p.m., let's say, and I yeah. said, I'll talk to you at 1 p.m., period. Ooh, I should you be do saying, not want to talk to them at 1 p.m. You're like, you don't you dare call you me. See, this is why you don't do operations. See, yeah. in, my, in my generation, in my generation, exclamation marks meant you were mad at so someone. So maybe I should say people management, not <laughs> I not managed operations. people too. I had a 400-person company. No, Everything was fine. But that's before the punctuation revolution. You got to evolve with the times. Yeah. I think your you generation. You say see you soon, period. Oof. 
Yeah, I think your generation so you is crazy. exclamation mark, very, very So different. basically, like, the English language has ceased to it's exist. It's dead, it, yes. I think we should just all communicate with emojis. Maybe I'll be safe then, I don't know. Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah. No, but, see, now but, you're happy Anna. face. No, but honestly, think of it. If somebody says, like, can't wait to see you later, and you're like, see you soon, period. See you soon, exclamation mark. See you soon, happy face. You're telling me all three of those things are the same? Yeah. No, the answer is no. <laughs> just, yeah, so just like English has gone out the window. You know, I'm I'm to the point where if I'm I'm using like voice to text, mm -hmm. I'll say, uh, let's meet later on, period. What time do you think you'll be there? Yeah. Comma, I'll be there at 4 p.m., period. No, I That's do the same I, thing. But at the end, it's how you end it. Yeah. <sighs> you guys it's are gotta crazy. gotta go up. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> but also, I this is why you crazy. need Rachel and I. To translate. Bless me, because I'm not so good with the English language. But <laughs> Rachel, it's amazing. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming here. Exclamation mark. <laughs> I'm so happy we got to do this. Exclamation mark. You're welcome. <laughs> no, imagine if you're like, you're, you're welcome. Can you imagine? Yeah, I'd say you're welcome. That's wrong. I have and to then say you you're get welcome. up and then you leave. I'm just going to start. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to translate this. So when I talk on the phone or on a Zoom yeah. call with any of our team yeah. from now on, and honestly, I'm just going to be doing this by people. They're going to call me. They're going to get on the call. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> no. I don't think I'll you understand. I don't think you understand the exclamation mark. Yeah, it means you, you're you loud. It means whatever came before no, the exclamation mark is loud. loud. Oh my God. That's exactly what it means. Maybe it's people loud. people will be like, hey, did Gary lose his hearing? It's tone. It's not volume. <laughs> yeah. It's tone. <laughs> it's okay, baby. Luminous we're going to make sure that we Anyways, have a course. In summary, we're a very course. great team. Can we do it? Sorry. <laughs> on the, on, in the academy, up. can yeah. we have a video module on how to communicate with millennials? And that you have to put exclamation marks. I want to have a module. It's got to be a lesson. We'll with like make a downloadable, one just for you. A downloadable yeah. PDF yes. on how to communicate with you your people. You got it. Whatever helps the cause. Mm -hmm. All right. You know why I do this? Why? Have you guys even asked me that question? No, I'm ever? realizing right now that I've never asked you that question. Because I, I asked Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. I mean, Gary's answer is Gary's answer. My why is feeling that we create a safe space online. Like the business aspect of it is obviously great. It mm -hmm. keeps us in business and we can evolve and develop and create more content. Uh, but to me, it's truly when I'm getting those daily interactions with the audience that tells me, I don't, social media freaks me out. This platform scares me. Everything is extreme. But when I come to your page, yep. I know that I can leave with, something, something that is, has a positive effect on my life. Well, especially the last few months, it can be so dark. Mm -hmm. You have this positive little corner of the internet in your community. And I know that that's so important to you. And yeah. that's hard to do, right? I yeah. mean, what you're doing is, is difficult to do because audiences are grown and retained most of the time based on sensationalism. It's sensationalism. And I, I kind of call it lowbrow content, but mm -hmm. What you do is, to, you know, even if you look at news, news is based on negativity, right? People yeah. tune into news to be, to, you know, to look at negative stuff because that's what people, those are the headlines that, that, they that get create, clicks. that get yeah. clicks and create engagement. But with you, the fact that you're doing it through, you know, positive, uh, positive content and value added content, it's a very difficult thing to do. And that's why I believe that the longevity of your personal brand is going to be there because you're doing it based on, based on positive content just positive and real content versus, you know, just being super sensational and controversial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, everyone always asks me, what, what's Valeria really like? Like, but what is she really like? And I'm thinking crazy. like, okay, well, she's a little crazy. She's definitely, her Why Virgo energy is a bit crazy. crazy. But no, there's, there's really what you see is what you get. And every time that I talk to anybody, you know, any... I would also say any employee, like anytime I've been in an interview, I always say, you know, why, why are you interviewing here? Like, again, mm -hmm. the same kind of question, why are you here? This is not a, a typical job, you know, a typical job interview, a typical job, uh, a typical role. So why are you here? Um, and everyone ultimately is saying, you know, they, it's that positive corner of the internet, but it's also just, you know, I find Valeria so authentic and I really just want to work for an authentic brand. Is she really like that? And it, it's, you know, their, their way of saying, you know, I, if she's not kind of tell me now <laughs> because I want out, but you know, people working at lots of different companies, brands, agencies, I think that that's their biggest, 
challenge is that they work for companies that they don't necessarily align with. Mm -hmm. And as we're getting savvier and we realize that the amount of time and energy, you, you know, Gary posted, you know, the single most important decision that you make in your life is the partner you choose. Where you work is also a very, very big decision. You spend a lot of time, especially now, especially being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I'm always available for you guys, as you know. So I, I spend most of my life just as much time with my kids as I do working. So mm -hmm. that's a huge part. Um, and so I think, you know, people coming to you, whether it's to work for you or whether it's, you know, to be a follower of yours, what you follow, who you follow makes a very big um, change in your life. It, it can yeah. be positive. It can be negative. It can inspire you. It can mm -hmm. send you into a, de a depression. So I think what's so special about you is you are what you get in personal life and online. And if some, if that appeals to somebody, come and join come our space on, on the internet. Come yeah. on in because we're here for it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think that's what I want to, I want to continue like fostering the community, but also helping other creators that might feel defeated because mm -hmm. of what they see online and feel like, okay, my content won't really yeah. matter among all this noise. So um, to me, that's why I'm also very passionate about uh, the academy um, that you've been building. It's, uh, it's really exciting. Anyways, that's my why. I wake up every morning and I'm like... <laughs> It's a new day. It's time to make no. the world a better place. <laughs> but also you wake up and you're like, why is everyone in my house? Yeah, my <laughs> seriously, today I got, I was like, this is not scheduled until 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming. Um, we are going to go and eat lunch now. Okay, bye-bye. It's dinner time. Oh, oh no, it's actually dinner time. dinner time. That's because you didn't schedule it. See, she doesn't <laughs> even know what time of day it is. I actually did schedule dinner. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't miss my newest episode right here. And if you're listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify, please go and leave a review with your biggest takeaway. I love reading your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions for guests or topics, you can leave them in the comment section. And always... Always remember, you are not alone.